Welcome to IMPACT, the carbon footprinting tool for communities, which has been developed by the Centre for Sustainable Energy in partnership with the University of Exeter. We've designed the tool to help communities in England to understand their carbon footprint at the small geography area, identify the areas that they have most control over and help them take action in ways that will have the most impact. The tool's been jointly funded by the Centre for Sustainable Energy, uh, the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy through the Midlands Energy Hub and the UK Research Councils. And the tool draws on two different approaches to carbon footprinting, territorial based reporting and consumption based reporting. Both of these look at where our emissions come from, but they calculate this in different ways. A territorial footprint essentially looks at all emissions arising from activity within a particular boundary. So treating an area as if it were an island and it's responsible for all production happening within that area. So this, for example, covers road and rail, industrial and commercial emissions, agricultural emissions, anything relating to land use, land use change and forestry, and also aviation and shipping, which is not always included in a territorial carbon footprint, but we've chosen to include it here. And it also includes household energy use. And the household energy use component is the only bit that's the same between a territorial and a consumption footprint. The consumption footprint um, looks at household energy use, which will include oil, gas, LPG, solid fuels, and so on used within a house. But it otherwise differs from a territorial approach in really looking at the behaviors and the purchases made by the people living in that area. So while it does, for example, look at road travel and transport, it's not considering just the roads that, that are within the parish boundary under consideration. It's considering instead the travel behaviors of the people living there. So whether they're taking long journeys out of the parish by car, or by train or by flight, that would all be counted as are the goods and services that they would buy, the vast majority of which would be imported. And that would include food, clothing, appliances, electrical goods, as well as services they might buy, such as banking, insurance, medical services, and even communications and entertainment services that they would buy. Um, so let's jump in and see how it works and talk about that in more detail for, two, for a particular community. So you press the get started button and you can find type into this search bar the name of the parish that you're interested in and at the moment as of February 2021 this tool works at the civil parish geography for England although we hope to add more geographies soon. It will always default to this territorial page and let's have a look at the features that are available on this page. You can switch between territorial and consumption view by pressing the buttons up here and you can also switch between a per household and a total view. There is a data table down the left hand side, which not only acts as a legend to help you link the parts of the donut to the data, but it acts as a data table ranking the emission segments in size order. Um, you can also see by moving the cursor over any part of the donut, you can get summary statistics for the segment that you're talking about. And the final control on this page is a show subcategories box at the top, which you can click, and that will reveal if there are any underlying data categories within the main category that you're looking at. So we can see here, as I mentioned, household energy use is made up of gas, oil, electricity, and so on. And you can click on any of the segments and call up a text box, which will give you a brief introduction to the methodology behind how that segment was calculated and the data sources that went into it. So looking, taking the segments of the territorial footprint to give you a bit of detail about them one by one, the turquoise section of this donut here represents road emissions, and that relates to all the transport using the roads within this selected boundary, whether or not those vehicles were, come from within the community itself and whether they're beginning or ending their journey there. So in the case of a parish with a very large A road or a motorway running through it, this would include emissions relating to all the journeys that pass along their section of the road, whether they were initiated in the community in the first place. So that can be quite a skewing factor in a small community with a very large road. The red section of the donut represents household energy use. And as I mentioned before, this breaks down into the types of fuel used, commonly used in houses, uh, gas, oil, electricity, and so on. And then these very small slivers that represent um, solid fuel, such as coal and uh, wood fired wood fired stoves. The orange section is commercial and industrial emissions and again this is related to the energy used uh, in commercial and industrial operations within your parish so again it will be electricity and gas and oil use. Um, and there is another segment this purple segment here which relates to F gases which will largely be also industrial or some of, some of this will be from domestic. 
Um, F gases are essentially powerful greenhouse gases with quite high global warming potential. They're largely found in refrigerants, aerosols and extinguishers. And on a territorial calculation basis, this data is available at a national level. So it's just been apportioned per head of population down to this smaller geography. Agricultural emissions we find in the green section, and this breaks down into agricultural emissions arising from things like uh, livestock and the actual cropping on the farm, as well as the smaller segment which relates to the fuel used by machinery and vehicles on farms. The blue and yellow sections are aviation and shipping respectively, and they aren't always included in a territorial footprint, but we have included them here because we think it's useful for communities to see these. And again, these are on a territorial basis taken from national data, which is then a portion down on a per head of population basis, which for aviation in particular, you may find is an underestimate for your community if you live in a particularly affluent area because flights tend to skew towards communities who can afford to take more of them. And the two final sections we can see for this community are emissions arising from waste, which are again um, calculated down from higher level data sets and other transport. And had there been uh, in this parish a diesel fire, a diesel railway, um, then that would have appeared as another segment alongside roads. But this is a parish that doesn't happen to have a railway. So we can look at this now on a consumption basis. And then we see this is made up of five segments, or so one of them is so small you may not see it. Um, again, we have household energy use in the red section, which breaks down exactly the same way it did and is the same data as found in a territorial um, footprint. Then we have um, food and diet this time in the orange section, consumption of goods and services in our yellow section, and travel in the blue section. And this travel section on the face of it looks the same as in the territorial because it breaks down into the same sort of segments, private transport, which is largely uh, car use and motorbikes and so on, flights and public transport. But the difference here is that the transport is referring to the mileage done by households, people that live in this community, whether or not this travel was done on the roads that are within the parish boundary. So people out commuting and driving to shops, for example, in a town that might be 10 miles away would be captured here. But on the other hand, the emissions of mileage of people who would be passing through this parish on its main road every day would not be captured because this consumption based footprint is only interested in, in the travel that's initiated and instigated, I suppose, by the people that live here. And what we also notice if we if we go back to the previous page and look at the territorial footprint for this um, community, the aviation um, total was 1.7 tonnes. But when we look at it on a consumption basis, it's higher at 2.8 tonnes. And this will be because these calculations on aviation mileage are not done by apportioning a national figure down by head, but they're actually built up from the bottom because much of the consumption footprint comes from household level data sets. So this is looking at travel surveys and information we have on the flying habits of people in different communities. So it reveals some of those socioeconomic differences. The yellow segment then looks at the consumption of goods and services, uh, and this breaks down um, into a range of, of goods and services that are often called scope three emissions when you see this done at a national level for consumption footprinting. And this includes emissions related to the purchase of all sorts of goods and services, homewares, toiletries, furnishings, appliances, electrical appliances, and so on, as well as sort of spare parts, replacement parts, and even really big purchases like vehicles. And it also includes maintenance and vehicles and other equipment, anything like services you might buy like banking insurance and medical support education and other kind of internet tv and other communications inputs um, we also in the consump in the food and diet section uh, break down the emissions between those that come from meat and fish and those that come from all other sources of food and drink intake and we think this is important because um, addressing uh, and reducing the amount of meat in diets is widely considered to be one of the things that all industrialised countries need to do in the fight against climate change. And finally, and almost imperceptibly small, is the fifth category in here, which is waste, which is um, that which comes from local authority waste and recycling figures, which is aggregated, uh, which is calculated down on a per household basis to make this parish uh, total. So once we know our uh, two footprints and we know what the pieces are telling us in the consumption and territorial approach, we might want to compare that with another community, either another parish 
or our own local authority or indeed another local authority. So we do that by clicking on compare at the top, which brings up the parish we were currently looking at. And then we can choose select a region to compare from which we can choose any other place. And we here will choose the local authority within which this, par this parish happens to be located. And we can see from this that our parish has a higher per head population, per head of population footprint than the district within which it's situated. Um, and we, that's drawn a territorial basis and also a consumption basis, uh, which is not particularly surprising. It's quite a sparse rural population in the parish we were looking at, uh, whereas the district as a whole will be made up of, of all bigger towns and so on that are within it, where there might be higher levels of public transport and also more smaller homes and more people on lower incomes, whereas your big uh, parish like this, a village with a lot of large houses, would likely have a large footprint linked partly to issues like being off gas, partly to issues like not having any public transport, but also partly to the uh, relative affluence. Uh, this parish happens, for example, to be in the least deprived 10% of the population. We can also click when we're here on showing subcategories again, which will give us a more granular look at the data of the two communities that we're looking at. Um, and you could also change, if you wanted to, you could go back to the change bar on either side, in fact, and select another parish or another district or the national average and just keep making comparisons. So the final part of the tool is the data downloads page. Uh, you might be happy to just use these kind of visual representations of your data, but if you do want to download it, you click on download the data at the top where you can download the data in three different ways, national, local authority, or parish. If you click national, this isn't going to give you a big spreadsheet with every single parish in it. This is actually the data aggregated up to give you a national picture. So if you actually do want a data set with lots of parishes, then you need to click parish and then select all, and that will give you every parish in England. And then you can select between territorial or consumption emissions and whether you want that data at the per household or total basis. And then if you press the download the data button that will become available, then your spreadsheet will start to download. And you can also download that data at the local authority level, which is an aggregate for all the parishes within that given local authority. And again, you can either select a particular local authority by typing the name in there, or you can click all to select a CSV file that will download with all local authorities uh, in England. Um, we will be adding new features to the tool over the coming months, and we are running a fundraiser at the moment to um, raise money to continue working on the tool. We already have, if you look on our donate page, ideas for what we would like to do. There is also an about page which explains the tool and how it works, as well as um, a page with more detail on how you can interpret the data and further resources, which can be found here and an FAQs page, which um, deals with some of the questions we've already been asked. If you do want to donate to the tool, or if you want to write to us with suggestions on future features, then please email us on impact-tool at cse.org.uk. And thank you for getting involved in the development of the tool, and we hope you have luck using it. Thank you. <laughs>